Well, hello and welcome to a simple quilter. Obviously, you can tell that Michelle's not doing one this week because I'm here and and we don't look anything alike. So I'm she don't feel too good right now. She's been kind of under the weather and and I was I'm a I'm a volunteer EMT and I EMT all last weekend at the the town and the county that I do that in and and we were talking. I said. Well, I'll do your video this week on my little barn quilts. And she said, oh, thank you. That'll help me so much. And I'm like, well, that's what I do, you know. I fix stuff. So I'm going to show you all how to make mini barn quilts. She's been kind of after me for a while to make a quilt with me make or make a little mug rug or something. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't want to sew. But I have this thing about shapes and designs. I draw these on on graph paper. I draw, I don't know, Michelle may have shown you some of them in, on one thing. And that's what I do. And that's one of the reasons why I really, really like her quilts so much is because of the shapes and designs that are in them. So I do these. And, and I, so I told her, I said, okay, I'll show everybody how to do it. It's really not that hard. It, it, the, the difficulty of it depends on how difficult of a pattern you want to try to do but there's some steps that you can use for any of them so I'm going to kind of show you this is a real simple one I don't know what it's called it looks like a star to me but so we're just going to call it a star and it's got squares and triangles and I guess that's what's oh that's a triangle too so it's got squares and triangles on it and it's going to be three different colors. And I've already done a little bit just in the in the idea of maybe saving a little bit of time. Um, th and this has only got one coat of white. I'm not going to put another coat on it right now. But I will later. But right now I just want to kind of show you all how to do this. And, and that's why I went ahead and painted it. So I can show you how to get ready to paint the next colors. Okay, so anyways, I'm going to do this. This is just a real simple one. And I'm going to take you through it and, and show you the, the basic things. Um, I made, I think I made like 10 or 12 of these last July. I made one, a big one for a couple years ago that's out on the fence. There's one right over there that we're going to hang on the wall someplace. And it's a bigger one. But you can make these, you can make little square ones or whatever, you know. So anyways, just a few of the tools. All this is, is a piece of wood from Walmart I don't know what they call it but you can see that it's got a a little frame around the back of it and it's under tape right now but on top of it is a, a little piece of plywood I think this is a 10 by 10 and I think they're like six bucks or something like that and then of course you got to have some tools um, this is just a, a just a little small framing square it's I use it for a number of different things. I use it a lot for like if I'm going to be cutting or different things. So there's that. This is a speed square. I use this for my triangles. So you can see right there, see how these triangles meet up? And you can just make your marks and whatnot like that. The other thing I use it for is sometimes I'll use it to find out if these boards are square. They're usually not. So I, and the other thing I like to use this one for too is like on this one when I got ready to, to make my squares in the corner I can just line it up on that. Two and a half. This is a 10 inch square so the middle square is going to be five inches. Two and a half inches. Two and a half inches. That way there's a certain level of proportionness to it. And you can use this to find out just how square the, and <laughs> this one's not, it's, it's not, it's close, but if you were building a house, this wouldn't work. And a little old protractor, and I mostly use this one, I, I'll use it for, like right here, I used it, you know, that's five inches in there, so two and a half inches is the middle. And I use it because it's, it's just simpler than using either one of these. Um, you got these little paint brushes. This is, 
the thing about the the tape, and maybe you're better at it than I am, but I've never done one of these yet where I didn't have a little bit of paint like seep under the tape or something. So I just use these for little touch up brushes. You gotta have an ink pen. These are those little cheap sponges you can get at Walmarts. And you you, dip, you put your paint on. When you get done, go wash it. You can use these things over and over and over. An X-Acto knife. Be careful, they'll catch you. And frog tape. You can use pretty much any kind of painter's tape. A lot of people like the, the blue painter's tape. And it's good. But honestly, I think the frog tape is in my opinion, is a little bit better. And it's green, which is one of my favorite colors. If worse comes to worse, a simple ruler will work. And you can kind of figure out how far it is between corners and then use Pythagorean's theorem and A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And you can figure out, you know, a squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? Okay, what's that supposed to be? And then you'll find out real quick just how unsquare these things really are. But they're close enough that if you do some things right, you can't tell it. The last thing you're going to need is your tasty beverage. My personal preference is Diet, is diet Root Beer, a and W, or Diet Mountain Dew. This happens to have Diet... Um, Diet Dr. Pepper in it right now because we had supper from a place and, and that's what I had and so I just poured it in here. I highly recommend whatever brand this is. I can, I don't know, just get you one of these. It'll keep your beverage cold for a long time. Okay. So how do you start? The first thing you want to do is get your, your painter's tape or your frog tape, whatever you want to call it, and tape off the whole top and tape a little bit around the edges too because you're going to be drawing on that and you don't you don't want to draw on the wood if you draw on the wood and you will make your lines on it you're going to see the, the lines and and underneath the paint so don't draw on the wood draw on the tape and if you wanted to i suppose you could go get some of the wider tape i just use this kind because i use it you're going to see how I use it in a, a differently in a minute, and the wider tape doesn't work well for that. So that's the first thing you do. The second thing you do, figure out what kind of barn quilt you want. Um, I think what we're going to do right now is Michelle's going to take a little bit of time and, and show you the different barn quilts that I've made over the last, well, most of them, all of them except one I made last July, I think the one that that's out, the biggest one, I think I made that one like, I don't know, four years ago or something, because she was gone and, and it was right before dove season and I needed something to do, so I made a barn quilt. So anyways, I hope you like those quilts, those barn quilts. Um, I don't, I don't, one of the things I try to take a lot of pride in is Michelle says your points have to meet. And sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. So anyways, like I said, you then you plan out your, um, what you want to draw. So I think we'll kind of zoom in on this one just a little bit. And you can see how I made the marks on it. Okay. And then what you're going to do, I like to start out with the lightest color first. Now, some people will tell you that you need to put a, a base layer down on top of these. I'm going to be straight up honest with you. I don't do that. Um, I guess if you want to, that's fine, but if you don't want to, that's fine too. You just do it however you want. I'm not, there's nothing wrong with it. I just don't want to do it. 
and the and actually I can see a spot where I missed right there. I'm gonna have to kind of touch that little spot right up. My point's not gonna meet, but that's because I I didn't get any paint there. But like I said, I only got one coat on this part, and I'll come back later and and fix it because right now I just want to show you how to do the process. So I like to do my lightest coat my lightest color first that way if i accidentally get the red or the black or something in the wrong place i'm not trying to cover it up with white it's easier to put a little black or red over white that's in the wrong place than it is to cover up those two colors with white so this is where i like to use the pro a place where i like to use the protractor and you have to be really careful because like i said these bad boys are sharp and that's a brand new blade i just put it in there last night okay so as you can see the the these triangles are going to be white this triangle in the corners are going to be black and the middle is going to be red <clears throat> so the first thing i want to do is cut out the small triangles and I'm gonna, and as soon as I get those cut out, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna put one coat of white on them for now, and, and we'll let that dry for a little bit, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to take that off because once we get all of the white ones painted, we can we can paint the rest of this. We only we only have to do the nice thing about this one is we only have to do two, we only have to tape off twice. So I'm gonna need so when whenever you're doing your cutting if you can see it real close see how i try to line up the ruler with where the tape is already cut that's a little trick on how to get your points to match you know that's the nice thing about this is you can make your points be wherever you want because we're not sewing them <laughs> we're painting them so i've cut there now i'm going to cut right here and right here And then I'm going to cut right here. Okay. And now these triangles are ready to peel. And that just comes right off of there. And if I would was a little bit smarter, I would start down here so that whenever I do peel it, it takes the other layer off with it. See? Okay, so there's one triangle. And then we'll get this one. Ta-da! Okay, if you saw that real close, you saw that lift a little bit right there. And that's one of the ways that you get paint under your tape. So you want to kind of run your finger over that and squash it all back. Uh-oh squash it all back down again Ta-da! Okay, let's put the cap back on our 
X-Acto knife. So this one, this one's ready for me now to finish painting the white. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make sure these are as tight down as I can get them. This came from Walmart. Apple barrel, apple barrel, whatever. Matt, I don't like gloss paint. Just got to shake it up a little bit. Put some on your, and if you'll notice, I put a little bit less as I go around. At least I try to. <laughs> and that's because as you go around, your brush will kind of soak it up. And um, you, won't, you won't need as much eat on each. It's like you're using the same amount, but there's already some in your brush. The other thing I like to do after I kind of daub it is I like to do that so that all the brush strokes are going the same way. So we'll be back in just a little bit. We're going to take a little pause right here and because this paint needs to dry. And I'll show you the best way to peel that tape off of there. And then we'll put down some new tape and I'll show you how to tape it off to to paint the the, the blacks and the red. Because honestly, if I, I mean, if I was to put down another coat of white on this right now, this one would be done. But for the, the sake of time, I'm just not going to. I'm going to, it'll take it about 30, 45 minutes for this paint to get dry enough that we can put tape on top of it and and then we'll peel the old tape off and put some new tape down and I'll paint the the blacks and the red. It's been just a little while. This paint's pretty dry. So what we have to do now <coughs> sorry is go ahead and and peel the rest of we gotta peel all this tape off. Because what we have to do next is um, tape over the white. And you do want to be kind of careful peeling this tape off. Because you could... Um, possibly damage the paint but that looks like that's going to come out real nice all right so you can see i've taken all the tape off and <clears throat> now we're left with our triangles here and so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to tape off the white so that i can paint the black red now another little tip especially if you're going to make a design that's more complicated than this one because some of them can get kind of intricate on your tape you might want to like um write down what color that part's going to be so that whenever you're you know cutting the tape off and, and peeling it to paint You'd be like, oh, I don't want to take that off because that's going to be like black instead of red or whatever. Because so, sometimes it can get, a, some of them can, for me anyway, can get a little confusing. All right, so give me a few minutes. Well, and I'll take this off. I'll show you real quickly a little trick because you don't have to tape off every little thing. What I like to do is tape off across the seam and it takes less tape and it's a little it's a little quicker another thing don't just tear your tape I, I mean it will it's just is basically just like masking tape but 
I like I like to cut my tape and keep the lines nice and straight. And then see what I will do is and I do like to make a little mark because it's hard to see sometimes where where the paint is <laughs> so I made a little mark and we'll make a little cut like so and then we'll do it again over here and that should be pretty good and then I need to go ahead and so we need to go ahead and cut this because that tape will have to come off of there so we'll need to do the same thing over here up off of there and make a little cut right here make one here Like that, <clears throat> make a little cut here, and then should have just went ahead and cut that all the way across, but. Alas, I didn't. <clears throat> so we'll just do that right now. there and see how I did that or what I did is I was able to um, tape off both sides of this at once because theoretically you could go ahead and just run your tape all the way down that way and but then you're still going to have to run a piece of tape on the other side and up here. We've we've still got a little bit of taping left to do. So here's what we would do next. Oops. We 
got to put some tape here and it looks like I've got a little bit sticking up so I'm going to run that all the way up there and you want to make sure and get that right right on that edge and then we'll do this again like I said this is the the taping is the is the most time-consuming element of this whole process but the thing about it is if you do a good job on your taping and or at least try to do the best that you can it makes it makes the rest of it a whole lot simpler too this one's being a little contrary it's not going where I want it there we go okay so now I need to cut a little off here whoops the knife tried <clears throat> the knife tried to catch the grain okay then we've got to put a little strip of tape right there not very much just a little bit if I do this right So, in essence, this is how we're going to tape this whole thing off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish taping this off, and we'll come back and and paint the other two colors, and um, try to give you a little bit of an idea of what it's going to look like when it's finished. So, that took me about 10 minutes to finish doing that. And as you can see now, we have our triangles here, triangles here. Then these will be your black, 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 and then red in the middle. The biggest thing that we have to watch out for is that we don't get the paint, that we don't jump the points with our paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the red first. Okay, now it's just a matter of moving our paint around, trying to clean it up a little bit. Might have got a little bit too much paint on there, but you know what? It is what it is. It's not like it won't dry, but if you look, you can kind of see why you need two coats. Got our paintbrush. And this time, instead of putting out a, a daub here and there and whatnot, I'm going to, because this is a little bigger area, and the black tends to go a little bit farther. So I'm going to... Um, I'm just going to put paint on one area at a time. I think I'm going to go ahead and, and we'll probably stop the camera for a second. And I'm going to go ahead and, and, and finish painting this. There you go. Okay, so 
I got the areas taped off. I know I'm going to have one area that I'm going to have to touch up. I think it's right here. I think it's right there. I think I'm going to have a little bit of a, I got a little gap in my tape, so I'm probably going to have to do something with that. I'll, I'll see what it looks like when we, when we undo the, all the tape. We're going to see what this looks like. I hope, I hope that we're all pleased. Here we go. Oh, let's see what we got. Uh, not bad, not bad. You want to say hi to Milo? Will you point the camera at us so Milo can say hi? Come here, good boy. Come here. Yeah. Yeah, Papa loves you too. Can you, t Milo, can you tell everybody hi? Say hi. Oh, yes, you're a good boy. Yes, Papa loves you too. Yeah, you good boy. Okay, so tell him bye, Milo. Say bye. See you. See you later. Okay, down you go. This is actually going to be a really nice barn quilt. A lot better than I kind of envisioned it to be because I thought it was going to be kind of basic when we started. <clears throat> okay. So, there you go. So, I hope you liked it. Um, like I said, this is a, it's just something I do so that I can kind of share Michelle's hobby in my own way. Because, you know, like I said at the beginning, I'm, I'm not going to sew. It just didn't going to happen. And, and she knows it. She's asked me, like, uh, I don't really want to do that. But, I, I mean, that's just not my thing. But, but this is, and it's something that I can do that, that, you know, makes her hopefully feel like I'm sharing her hobby with her again. But anyways, um, make sure and like and subscribe and share, share with the friend. Um, you know, like we say, she always likes to get the comments and she always tries to respond to them. Um, and in the meantime, have fun quilting or barn quilting. <laughs>